Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a NBA 2K25 thumbnail in 2025. So basically I'm going to show you from scratch how to make a thumbnail. Also talk about Photoshop alternatives and later on at the end add effects to it. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. Now, as I said, I actually wanted to go over some Photoshop alternatives. So that's in case you want to follow this video along, but you don't have Photoshop. And so the first one I actually want to talk about is called Photopea. Now for that one, you don't need to download and install anything. It's actually just in your web browser. By using any search engine, you just search Photopea and go to the official website. And there you actually can see you have a very complete Photoshop alternative, which actually also allows you to open Photoshop files in Photopea. So you can actually use packs, for example. And all of that I do show in a video up in the right corner here. And then the second alternative is going to be GIMP. Now that one is a software that you have to download and install. It's actually a pretty known one and it's also known as a very complete alternative option to Photoshop where you also have a lot of similar tools that you actually find back in Photoshop as well. And so same in that case, if you want to follow along to a tutorial that actually goes over that software as well, I actually also up in the right corner here have a video on how to actually use GIMP if that's something you want to check out as well. But anyways, guys, I'm just going to jump in here. So basically to start off, we're of course going to go to file and new here. So I want it to be 920 by 1080 pixels because that's every video and thumbnail on YouTube. So do make sure it's 920 by 1080. Then we want the resolution to be 300 here around there same pixel inches and then the rgb color i definitely advise you to use background content you can actually make this transparent if you want but i'm just going to go for white here then i'm just going to click okay so then when we're here as you can see i have a blank canvas here a white background and first thing we're going to do actually is going to go to file and place linked to actually add our first image here which is going to be this background right here as you can see right here i'm just going to make this slightly bigger so that it overlays our canvas here and also make sure that this one here maintain aspect ratio is selected because that makes sure at all times it's the same and so it doesn't deform in any way you know so just always make sure that you have that maintain aspect ratio selected right here but if i place it back in the middle here i actually as i said want it to be a little bit over 20 here we're just gonna put it here there we go now basically what i'm gonna do else here this is a bonus and i'm basically gonna add a rectangle here rectangle tool approximately in the middle here this is just so that i have a reference you can see there we go this would be the middle and it is simply because, as you can see, the two characters here are not really in the middle. And of course, if you want our thumbnail to be a little bit in the middle, we do want to make sure that both of them, of course, are going to make this bigger a bit afterwards. So that both of them are actually like in the middle, if you will. Just a little detail, but of course, that's always nice. Then I'm going to have to make this slightly bigger here. I'm going to put this a little bit up here. Maybe something like this that you have the shoe right here. Of course, I can remove it right here just by going backspace. If I click on the little eye here, it actually just makes it invisible, but the layer is still there. It's really up to you. I'm just going to keep it. Why not? You never know. But that was just to use for reference so that I know how to approximately get it into the middle here, seeing as this is one layer. But I actually later on cut these two out right here. But let me first actually overlay this image with another layer. So we're actually going to go back here to the rectangle tool. I'm going to make sure it covers all of over the layer. Now, if you have like these corners, these borders right here, you just want to make sure that one of these right here this one, the stroke is select on this one right here. So you don't, don't have a stroke on the rectangle anymore. And then this one right here, I'm going to put it to the red color. Let's actually put a bit lighter, as I said, maybe around. There we go. I'm going to say something like this right here. So that's a bit lighter. So it's not like too much. What I'm actually going to do then is make sure that the layer in question is selected here, the rectangle. I'm going to go to normal. I'm going to do multiply. As you can see, it overlays the image. And together with the multiply, it gives already a nice, pretty nice look right here. And so I also want to add the logo immediately right here. So I'm going to do place linked again. And this time select the logo. There we go. We're actually going to keep that this size for the moment because as you can see right here we don't want this image and it's a bit blurry as well so what we can do then is make sure you only select that part also make sure the layer is selected of course in this case the logo right click on the logo do rasterize layer right click again here while it is selected and then you do layer via cut and now so it's a layer apart now it's a different layer you can just delete that and then basically this right here put it around in the middle you can just double click on it and do color overlay then of course make it well i would say quite white here there we go change the size of this a bit I'm actually going to stick it up here now, as i said don't worry i will cut out the characters later on so that they overlay the logo here just have to see what size i want the logo to be okay if i look from afar as you can see it's pretty good let's click okay here and while we're at it I'm actually going to add a drop shadow to this as well so i'm going to double click to bring my layer style again click on drop shadow so basically i think i'm going to keep this at 100 percent going to bring the spread up a bit let's see about the size as well we don't want it to be too much either let's see here there we go and maybe the spread a bit more so the spread is going to make it thicker as you can see it becomes more of a solid as you can see this is pretty much just a uh, stroke at this point but if you bring this down the spread it's going to be more as you can see subtle and also less solid basically so there you go i think i'm going to keep it at this we don't really need anything more to be honest than that and also actually before i forget i do want to make these two actually apart here so what i'm going to do then is actually zoom in a little bit right here as you can see basically what i want to do is make this red because in the original logo this is red and this is white basically just going to go here to the pencil tool and just want to make sure that it's on path in this case you might make sure 
detour, it's on path. And so here, it doesn't really matter. It's more around here. We want to specifically go through without touching either of the two here. It's pretty important. And you can just scroll your mouse. Same here. The only goal really here is to not touch either of the two. And there we go. And then up here, it doesn't really matter. You can just click away here. And there we go. Make selection again. And basically it's the same idea. Make sure that the layer is selected. And we're going to make sure you go to selection right here. Right click within the logo, within the selection rather. I do layer via cut. Once again, to become a different layer apart. And as I said, we're going to give this a color overlay, but more of course of a reddish color right here. But not too much, of course, as I said before, not too dark, not going to be very visible. It's just something around here, and it's a beautiful red color. I like that, and that's not bad. Let's say like this, and here as you can see, if you zoom out, just to fit the screen here. As you can see, we can also just take both here if I select the layer and the original logo, and we just do Ctrl G and call it logo. Now as you can see it does overlay here a bit the, the shadow because it became a different layer. So to avoid that we can actually go back here and remove the drop shadow from both of them and then we can actually give the entire group here so where the both of the layers are in a drop shadow. And that's what we're going to do. As you can see fortunately it remembered the settings right here so this is actually what we wanted and so you can just immediately click OK. The whole logo now has a drop shadow that's what we wanted. But anyway I do think it's about time now that we're actually going to cut out both characters. So I'm just going to hide this and this right here. So basically I'm going to go back here to the pen tool. Once again make sure it's on path right here. This time make sure it's actually on the background so the background layer selected here this image I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit actually maybe around here and basically what i'm gonna do now is pretty precisely actually go around both players and make sure that everything is this selected now i think i'm gonna do them both apart so that they're both two separate layers i think i'm gonna do it like that might actually zoom out once here and basically i want to make sure that i follow the lines pretty precisely now i'm not gonna do it perfect here but i do want it to be pretty accurate so just gonna follow these lines here and basically you want to avoid as you can see right here to go a little bit too much over here because take a part of the background and you don't want that so you do want to avoid to go a bit too much into the light right here so I think this is probably a shadow. We're not going to really take that one. But then I'm going to continue here. You can see sometimes it might get a bit tricky to see whether or not it's still the layer you want or that it actually became the background. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish. You can also zoom out a bit if you really want to see it. But I think that for the moment it should be fine. But anyway, I'm just going to continue this a bit. Of course, I'm not going to show you everything because it's going to be pretty long. I will speed it up a bit here, but I will show you from time to time how it advances over here. Okay, and there we go. I just connected the last two parts right here. So now as you can see if it would fit the screen, you can see it's quite some work as you can see right here. Now what you want to do then is actually go back here to the pen tool and make sure that you click on selection up here. Click OK. Now it's going to become an entire selection. Once again, make sure that the layer here, selected the background layer. Also make sure here that I rasterize the layer. I'm going to make sure I have the selection tool again here. Click on him. It's somewhere here in between the lines. I'm going to do layer via cut. And as you can see right here, if I click on him, it just became his own layer as you can see right here. It's not perfect. Probably some outlines right here. It's sometimes hard to see with the background, the difference between the layer and the background. But anyways, I'm just going to keep him hidden for the moment. So I'm actually going to do a cut out of her right now. So same, I'm going to go back to the pen tool. I'm going to zoom in quite a lot right here and go around her with the pen tool. Okay, let's see here and there we go as you can see i'm going to do selection click ok i'm just going to do fit the screen again here and so once again make sure of course the background is selected go back to the selection tool click somewhere between the lines layer via cut and as you can see right here she also is cut out now now i do admit i forgot these parts right here but since I'm not going to completely cut her out, I'll just leave him to be honest. So I'm a bit cheating a bit here. So anyway, it's not perfect, but it's all right. What we're going to do then is actually put the layers right here above. I'm going to make this visible again. You can see we have them right here. I'm going to zoom out once more. And so I'm actually going to make the logo visible again. I'm going to place that underneath right here. And as you can see, we got a nice little overlay going on here. So then I actually also wanted to add the text here. I am going to go with the font called American Captain. So I'm going to make this white for the moment. And type thumbnail. I'm going to make this pretty big actually. Way bigger than I normally do. And actually what I'm going to do as well is actually make the text overlay over the players. So there go, so approximately 100 let's say. Then I'm going to start by placing it where I want it to be approximately. Just use the space bar here actually. Actually make this a bit smaller. Just a little bit. There we go. We don't want it to overlay too much otherwise it's not really going to read and be able to see what the text says. So that's also why I'm using from a distance here which I always advise by the way. Just to see from a distance how it looks. And as you can see here I think if you make it overlay it's still pretty clear what the word says. So then I'm immediately going to type tutorial as well. While we're at it. There we go. I will make this slightly smaller. 
There you go. And now I have to see approximately where we'll cut off the letters. Let's actually put the R right here. The I and the A. Let's see here from a distance. That actually looks nice. The letters are still visible. That's what we want. So I think I'm going to keep it like this. As we are going to add in this case a outer glow. The same here. Keep the spread pretty low. The size. I'm going to put this up a bit. Uh, not too much actually. We're really not going to do anything crazy here. I just want to make sure it slightly distinguishes the background here. So I'm actually not going to touch it more than this I think. So I'm just going to click OK here. As so I'm going to do the same for the tutorial of course. Double click again and do the outer glow once again. And remember the settings. So I'm just going to click OK. I am by the way just going to put these into a group. Control G. It's called transparent maybe. Now you can of course if you don't want to cut out the characters yourself. You can for example do the name of a player and type PNG behind it or render. Which basically give you characters like these without a background. So a transparent image basically which you can just place anywhere. So you don't necessarily have to go through all of the cutting out that I did. And I will also while hiding the text here give this a U saturation. So if you only want to affect these two images right here. So in this case the group transparent I made. I'm going to click on U situation right click and i'm going to do create clipping mask just to make sure it only affects the transparent group in this case and so i actually want to colorize i'm going to give them the color right here which is of course going to be a bit more red now if we overdo this of course you can see if i make them too red here it's going to be too difficult to distinguish them from the background so we're going to bring this down a bit and make them more really just give a light reddish touch to them so it's really light, barely visible. So that as you can see, they do jump out a bit more, which is of course way more important. This can just keep up zero here because it's in the red. And so there we go. Just quickly something I wanted to add because it looks a bit nicer. And so I'm actually going to focus on the text right now. So basically what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take both of them, actually going to place them underneath transparent images right here. And as you can see, so that they are above the text layers. I'm going to hide this again. But once again, I'm going to click both of the texts right here. I'm going to duplicate layers. I'm going to drag these copies here above the use saturation. And there we go. So now we have actually the two text layers underneath the transparent images of the players and two above which will help me create the text effect that I want to make okay so when I make them visible here you can see I'm gonna make these two visible and the other two basically what I'm gonna do now if I start with thumbnail I'm actually gonna bring fill right here to zero As you can see we already start seeing the effect right here and then basically I want to go here in FX and do stroke there we go so keep this on black and do one okay and basically I'm gonna do the same for tutorial the copy here so I'm gonna put this at zero to fill go back to stroke here simply add a simple stroke same here keep the size on one and then do the black stroke right here and as you can see right here we have a pretty nice but really good looking overlay and so what i did want to do as a nice little touch here is actually make this red right here and so i'm applying it to both right here as you can see and there we go i'm going to give it this light reddish color i'm going to ctrl c that click ok i'm going to give it to that second layer as well and there you go it looks nice and then tutorial as well just going to do the first four letters here same hide that one i'm going to go to the layer underneath give that the same color just unhide the other one and I'm going to do the same just to be sure that it have the same color there we go and so as you can see nice little bonus thing here because on this side it was red and then this side it's white just for the general image how it looks as you can see as you can see from far it doesn't look half bad you know so why not and now I do think it's time to add some finishing touches here what I want to do then is actually add a new layer you do that by going to create a new layer zoom out even a bit more here I'm going to go to the brush tool right here and so this has to be quite big and I want to be maybe a bit more towards here I want to have quite of a dark red right here and basically what we can do then I'm going to zoom out once more here add some glow here as you can see a bit here on the sides and maybe up here you know like spotlights a bit that a kind of effect you know a bit on the sides slightly there we go so now i'm gonna zoom in here it's a nice little extra touch you know you've probably seen it around i just noticed i'm actually gonna make sure the logo is maybe a little bit more above here just a little bit but anyway then at last because now i'm gonna do the last and final thing is gonna be adding some exposure effects brightness you know play with the playing with the whole image of the thumbnail bit and what i'm gonna do first and this is something i can advise you to do as well is basically just go and select all of the layers you should also be able to do ctrl a as you can see right here and then i'm gonna do ctrl g again and it becomes one group and we're basically gonna call this thumbnail backup the whole group as you can see just became one image basically what we're gonna do then is actually go to duplicate group there you go we're gonna hide the first group and then when we click on the second copy here we're gonna do convert to smart object and so as you can see the second copy here right here becomes an image basically becomes one object that we can change now and so in case something goes wrong or there's something we really don't like or want to change here in the text on the background you can just hide this and basically go back to every individual layer here and change anything we just let's do this at the end because we can actually change the whole image as a whole by adding the effects as i said so actually thinking about the effects i think i want to first in the first instance add some exposure there you go as you can see you have to do this to a certain degree that really depends on the image and so i'm basically just going to find some settings that adapt to this image in question this i'm hesitating to put this bit down that actually looks quite nice or a bit up here it doesn't have to become too blurry if you do the offset too much so we don't want to actually overdo that maybe if i put it down this looks quite nice actually but maybe just to have a bit of a blurry effect on it i do quite like it and so actually not touch the gamma here we don't really need to uh let's see then i'm gonna add maybe a bit of 
curve, but not a lot. Maybe slightly, really slightly here. And just add like a bit of a little bit of a bow here. Really, as I said, this is up to you, but you have to adapt it to the image in question. Okay, there we go. So I have to fine tweak it a bit. Sometimes it's hard. There we go. Maybe some brightness and contrast. So actually stop doing this because you, you want to really find the best things you want to add here. And so it's hard to put the pencil down, if you will. But I think pretty much there. That didn't really add that much here at the end, the brightness and contrast, but uh, let's just say that's something. Anyway, I will keep it at this. And so if you actually want to save all of this, you can actually go to file, save as, and there we go. I'm just going to put it in my personal thumbnail folder and just call it like this. So I'm just going to do save. And then of course you also want to save it as a GPG. So you're going to click on save as type, and then you're going to do G GPEG here. So the GPG, GPG, and GPE. I do advise you to use this one. There you go, do save. And then here quality, you want it to be on 12 maximum here and progressive. You can put this at five and then you click okay. And there you go. You have the best quality you can get also as saving the image. And as you can see right there, that's the thumbnail I want with. I like to do something new every time I make a thumbnail on my channel. This time I wanted to play around with the overlaying text here. I had never done that before. So in any case, hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, it would be really nice. Subscribe to us, be really nice. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.